Wow, it's six eight media podcast. What are we gonna call it? Welcome to episode one, everybody. My name is James David from eight six eight media. I'm joined here with a friend by the name of Rocky Hanuman. It's nice to be here. Nice, nice, nice. So we're having a little bit of a discussion here, just perhaps basic stuff, just running a test, I guess, as well for the first podcast. Today was a sort of a tragic day because of the incident that occurred yesterday in New Zealand. The media headlines have been absolutely dominated by that atrocious terrorist attack. And my um, heart goes out to all of the families affected by that incident. But I don't want to talk too much about controversial and about, you know, negative news for our first ever podcast. So let's move right on. Well, first of all, you know, I'm really impressed by everything that 868 Media has done. Um, I really want to thank you for having me on the podcast today. Um, I saw that you have your new website up uh, since yesterday. And it looks really, really great. And um, uh, yes. Ironically, Rocky's um, trying to deflect from the fact that he is the one responsible for most of the website design that went into that actual website itself. So you're the one that I have to thank <laughs> more, than, more than you thanking me. <laughs> but I think that, um, you know, 868 Media just came about as an idea, just speaking with friends, you know, Rocky being one of them and many other people as well, just having a lot of interesting discussions. And you really realize that you don't hear these things being spoken about in the mainstream media, or you just don't hear um, everyday concerns being mentioned in the way that they should be. So I guess as a way to sort of combat that, we have 868 Media. And um, yeah, I mean, it's been fun. It's been cool. Um, we have some new things coming out. We're trying to order everything now. So it's fun. Yeah, it sounds good. I mean, um, I think it's great that the uh, Caribbean finally has this sort of alternative grassroots journalism really provide some competition at least to the big media houses you know um so it's like you know they don't have a monopoly on all the news that's filtered through so i think it's great and you know competition is always good i'm sure they'd welcome it and everything um but yeah happy to be here i hope this podcast series runs really <laughs> really long and becomes you know yeah. really famous too well, do you have uh, do you have any, any idea what you're going to call the series is yeah well i guess that um that could perhaps be the first thing we discuss because yeah i actually have <laughs> no idea you know if 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 it has a nice name and you like it well okay that means we figured out something by but let's see if we could come up with something um, i was just thinking maybe like 868 podcast or 868 media's podcast or media 868's podcast i have no idea or discussions with or just what the eight six, how about the 868 media show or the 868 show it could be the maybe what the eight six eight um eight six eight podcast show. I mean, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Eight six eight audio show. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very technical. <laughs> if if you are listening to this right now, it perhaps means that we don't have a good name for it as yet. So let's leave this one up this to the fans like the pilot episode like episode not even episode one this is episode zero in fact <laughs> there's actually going to be no youtube video attached to this one which is what we're probably going to do for all the future episodes because we're actually right now just in my dorm room and it's so awkward that it's impossible to get a camera shot so hopefully that's sorted out by next week for this podcast series but right now it's just going to be audio and probably like some photos on youtube yeah. but I mean, hopefully the audio will, will be up, uploaded to all of the um, big podcast sites like Google Podcasts and iTunes and um, maybe we could get it on SoundCloud. I'm not too sure. Funds is a big issue still yeah. with this whole project, you know. But at least we can have some interesting topics to, you know, discuss and so make it interesting for the viewers. Yeah, let's go. What, what, what's, what's going on right now in the world of... Well, I, I was looking at, I, you know, I was looking at the uh, news and I think one of the things, you know, prior to today where the... Um, the, the shooting has really dominated the mainstream. Um, prior to today, you know, the big news that yesterday was about Boeing. And, oh, yes. Um, you know, there have been two crashes with this brand new plane, the 737 MAX 8. Um, and so several countries, I think most countries, have grounded uh, the aircraft until um, they can figure out really if it's linked to it. The problem is why it hits home in the Caribbean is because our very own Caribbean Airlines has just ordered 12 new Boeing 737 MAX 8s to replace his current fleet, and they're expecting delivery in December. Yikes, so, but... So, you know... Is that... But, sorry to cut you off, but does... 
as far as I know, Caribbean Airlines actually own their planes, or is it just like a lease deal? Or I mean, how's that work? I'm not really sure. I mean, mo- I, I, I suppose you know, if, if you're going to replace your entire fleet, the most feasible way to do that would be, you know, if you're end to perhaps end the current lease and then lease a new set of planes. I mean, it seems that they're pretty much replacing the fleet, which indicates to me that the planes are on lease rather than than they own them. Yeah. I'm actually looking for a tweet right now by Colin Lindbert where he, oh, here it is. He says, um, oops, he says, Carib- Caribbean Airlines currently has a fleet of 12 Boeing 737-800s. There are, there are no known safety issues with the 737-800s. This is a completely different aircraft to the MAX 8. So currently the issues with the MAX 8 do not affect CAL flights. So that's, that's actually unrelated. And that's not the one I was looking for. But I think it was related directly to the to the um deal that they have with those coming in those coming in ones. Wow, he's I, I was actually looking forward to the seven three seven Max Ace because I don't know if you saw any pictures of the interior, but it's a really amazing interior. Um it has a lot more headroom. Um the seats are a lot better. Um the airplane is, you know, has all this fancy sort of mood lighting in, inside and stuff like that. Uh, there's more headroom. The um you know, it, it it since it's not made out of aluminum, it's made out of like carbon fiber and stuff like that. Uh, you can have a lot more humidity in the in the aircraft, and that provides a much more comfortable flying experience for many passengers. And you know, I, I think I think people before the crashes, people were actually looking forward to the um, the delivery of the new seven three seven Max eight, but. Yeah, and I now that safety comes first, right? That that's all been thrown up into the air now. Yeah, of course. I mean, I wouldn't want to be like, "Hey, this is a really nice, comfortable nice carbon fiber you're in. crashing in, in in the ocean." Then you you yeah. know say, "Yeah, comfortable," you know, but just with a little more crashes than usual, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Not making it out. No, I know a pilot, and I think that that was his sentiments exactly. You know, really excited for it, and um, well, now that's probably up in smoke. You know. It's, if he has a wife, well, he does have a wife that might might not be too um, kosher, you know, flying <laughs> around <laughs> in one of those things, at least. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think that that's a big deal. The next thing that I saw in the media that probably we could talk about next. I mean, I don't know if you have anything else on that um, on that on that note, but is the fact that I saw something to do with the new petroleum company. Um, they're taking on more debt or something like that. I mean, yeah, I, I saw that as well. Um. Uh, I I don't actually I don't have all the facts, but you know since the um since well Petrotrin the refinery has been closed I think they basically kind of split it up into different companies and um, focusing on different things. So one was fo- going to focus on exploration and production, but they won't be refining anymore. Um, and one of those companies um, I saw that basically they a bond of I think it was eight hundred fifty million U S or something like that was about to mature and they didn't have the funds to pay for it so it seemed like they took out more debt i think it was something like 1.4 billion wow. i don't know if they're just refinancing or you know trying to dig a hole to fill another hole which is taking on more debt just to pay existing debt which if if that's the case that's a very scary situation you know yeah and i mean like it seems as though because the government is involved directly with that whole whole sort of scheme of things I think that, you know, they're tro- probably trying to avoid uh, or probably trying to get the government, sorry, to, like, bail them out in the future, eventually. I'm not too sure exactly. I mean, that's been the history of Petrotrin. The government's always been bailing bail them out. out. Too. <laughs> um, when you run a company and it's not your own money invested with somebody else's money. You know? Yeah, state, state business, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's really worrying because, you know, oil and gas is what Trinidad and Tobago depends on. For, for most of its um, foreign foreign exchange and um, every you know taxpayers generally want to see that the oil and gas industry is in a sustainable situation and um, you know people depend on that for their livelihoods and everything like that so it's, it's a huge worry I think for everyone in Trinidad and Tobago and I hope I hope everything gets sorted out soon. Yeah, and that also, I mean, a lot of people were praising um, the PNM government for taking a step to close down the, the refinery, uh, etc., because of how much money was spent on it already. But does this sort of new, at least in your opinion, this new sort of, um, <laughs> you know, taking on more debt, does that mean they're actually just making the situation worse? I mean, how does that whole thing 
I guess it's probably I, a little overshot, you know, maybe. I, 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 don't, I don't know whether that is for. Like, the, the reports weren't very clear on that. With Ro- it could be Reuters for, did the report, right? I think it was Reu- Reuters, which is a German news agency. Wow. Um, the, I mean, you know, taking on new debt, like, for instance, if you're refinancing debt, if you're taking on new debt and you're getting the new debt at a cheaper rate than the old debt, then, you know, you could say that's, that's sustainable. If you're getting it on better terms, like you're, it's rescheduled and you have a longer period to pay, then that's great. That's sustainable. But they didn't actually say what the, debt, the new debt taken on was for, except that it was to pay off the existing 850 million bond, which is about to mature. Um, so well, I think we'll have to wait until more information comes out as to what exactly you know, the, the debt was for. But everybody hopes, you know, when you take out debt, everybody hopes that it could be used sustainably, you know. Yeah, for sure, definitely. For better or good. I mean, what, what else is news? Do you have anything else there? Well, um, the other day, I, um, Elon Musk uh, ah. <laughs> just uh, unveiled a new Tesla Model Y. Um, uh, a, a year ago, he unveiled it, the Tesla Model 3, which was, you know, I think a pretty momentous achievement because um, it was the first time we had, like, an all-electric car that was sold at an, a generally affordable mainstream price. And that was supposed to be the, the critical point, you know, the turning point where people started tr- making the switch from gas-powered vehicles to electric-powered vehicles because it's more affordable, it's more mainstream. And, um, you know, <coughs> sorry, uh, it's, it's, it's actually kind of exciting because what he has managed to do, which is just take a small company from nothing just uh, a decade ago to now where it's rivaling the likes of Ford and GM. And um, but you know, it's, it's really inc- incredible. And the Tesla Model Y is, is based on the existing chassis of the Tesla Model 3. Yeah. And But it's in an SUV format. So it's uh, like, like $4,000 more expensive, which is still pretty affordable to many people. So, so um, you know, I, I think everybody kind of hopes it'll spur the adoption of electric cars and lead to a cleaner and greener future i guess so i kind of like those nice loud cars and stuff you know no that's all right rocky has a little bit of a cough here um so tesla now has model s model 3 model x and model y which spells sexy <laughs> um, actually, that is, actually um, that is pre-planned for sure right that there's no way that they were like yeah let's <laughs> let's just do this this well, way you know? I, I saw the um, i saw the presentation by elon musk so basically they said um elon musk was kind of describing how he ended up naming the vehicles the, the first one to come out was the model s and s stands for a sedan then he came out with the model x and then a joke was made to have a model e but then ford threatened to sue them if they came out with the model e because ford already has a model e um so then they said, hmm, well, you know, Model 3 might work because it was, in fact, a third model. And 3 backwards kind of looks like an E. So that's how they came out with Model 3. And while the Model I, for no other reason, that it completes the word sexy. Um, that's so funny. So it's a pretty kind of fun way to name, to name the, the whole line of Tesla cars. Yeah, I think, I think that's, 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 um, that's sort of witty of them as well, you know, to sort of run with it like that. But you said that um, they're sort of challenging the likes of Ford and, and the other big uh, car, mainstream cars, I guess. But I've heard it said that they have actually never made a profit since their inception or existence or whatever yeah, you say. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a big thing for investors. Investors, you know, because they believe so much in the future of Tesla and what they can accomplish. And rightly so. I mean, Tesla has really, really exceeded everybody's expectations. Um Investors just are pumping more and more money into the stock of this company, and all of that. But they money, have never made a profit, right? Let's just clear the record on they, that. They've never made a profit. Um, they're still waiting on them to make a profit. <laughs> My gosh! Um, uh, so all of their expense expenses now is just basically taking investors' money and pumping it into the company, um, and that isn't very sustainable because you need it's a, you know it's almost like a Ponzi scheme. But I don't want to suggest Tesla is a Ponzi scheme. But basically, you're taking money from investors. You're putting into the company more and more, uh, but you're not generating a profit. There will come a time where investors will start, will stop putting money into the company at such a rate, and then in order for the company to be sustainable, it has to be able to generate profit on its own. So, well, hopefully, with the Model Three, you know, Tesla will finally be able to sell enough units 
by volume to start making a profit. But uh, we'll is see he what pulling happens. um? What's the name of that movie? The one where the guy sold lolly penny stocks and stuff. Wolf of Wall Street. Is he pulling a wolf of? <laughs> uh, more like a Bernie Madoff <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I don't want to suggest that at yeah, all. Yeah, I yeah. mean, this is kind of co- common for companies because, you know, when you're taking something from nothing where the technology didn't exist, you know, a decade ago to this. Just like a revolutionary kind of stuff. You need a lot of uh, capital expenditure and for research and development purposes. And I think this, this is probably going to, we're still probably in the research and development phase in a lot of the key areas of Tesla's operations. Yeah. So we could really I, I, think, mm-hmm. I do think investors are still waiting for a big payoff though in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's see if they get it. Um, well, what else do we have? Because we could we could actually just talk about any one of these things for so long. I feel like we should just go to another thing, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, a, a big thing recently has been the safety on UE's campus. Um, I think just the other day you were doing a report on um, this guy who was uh, maybe maybe you could tell us about it. Yeah, well, you actually, wrote an article on it. Yeah, so well, I wrote an article on about on the twenty seventh of February, and that was a whole fiasco in itself because. Um, I saw a complaint on the UE um, Student Guild of Complaints Committee or something like that, their Facebook page. And so I decided, okay, let me take it up. So I, I did some research. I spoke to the person. I spoke to the, all the relevant people involved besides the people who actually committed it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote an article about it, tried to, you know, publish it with um, a paper. I'm not going to say which one. And it was a big, <laughs> big problem. Basically, didn't want to pay me for the article. So wow. I said, hey, let me just take the blog seriously, the website seriously, Mm -hmm. and I posted it there. Then I went to class just this week, and um, somebody was saying, hey, man, you know, my car, you know, got robbed and whatever. So I kind of just came in and I spoke to that guy about it a bit. Um, And yeah, wrote a story about it, but it was just the most sort of hilarious story ever. Most bizarre story. Yeah, (laughs) basically the, the, the story goes like this, that he... The guy parked his car in one of the car parks in UE called the TGR car park. And he came back about two hours later and he noticed that all the items in the car were just sort of scattered around all over the place and whatnot. And then um, he looked around and he noticed that his charger and his uh, auxiliary cord were gone. But he noticed also that something was left in the car. You know, that is a loaf of bread, <laughs> a loaf of bread. And I was like, wow, they left you a loaf of bread. And he was like, and they didn't buy it. It was homemade. You know? <laughs> like they baked this for him, <laughs> you know, so it made it kind of like an unfair trade. But so he said, okay, he was a little bit shaken up because he knew his what, car got. What, was the bread any good? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I didn't consult. I don't think he would eat it, but he definitely said it served as some co- comedic relief to the whole <laughs> some, entire some case. Some compensation, I suppose. Yeah. As well. But I, I sort of want to speak a little bit around that whole thing about reporting about incidents on UE. Obviously, I'm a UE student, so that's why the only, well, the three news stories I've written so far, one was like an opinion and the other two were involving UE incidents. But the second one, when I posted it, one guy, I can't remember his name, but I'm not going to pull it up now and tell us and then call out his name, but he sort of was trying to challenge the authority of the right. of the sort, saying, you know, this guy, I mean, he's just putting us onto his website, so he's not authoritative <laughs> and whatever. So I felt kind of like, man, that's so stupid to say, you know, I mean, if you don't believe the cases, I mean, first of all, he's already not trusting in the guild because I sh- first, it has to be approved by the guild, mm-hmm. um, by the vice president of the guild, who's currently Tariq Ali. And so... He, I think that's his name. I hope I got that correct. Uh-huh. But so he sees the post. He probably reads the story first. And then he knows, okay, this probably, this happened. And then he approves it, right? right? Now, I don't know how aware he is of everything, but he has been approving the posts. And I have been confirming the stories with all of the right people uh-huh. that they should be confirmed with. So everything that is written there is what I've been told um, from the case. And so, yeah, I mean, if you definitely, if you think you have a problem with, believe in the stories that are written i mean whatever but just know that i'm the only one who's talking about safety still on the ue campus you know yeah i I think actually you mentioned that in both cases the it it, it, the suspect was kind of the same it was an indian guy with a a blonde mohawk or something yeah they had eyewitnesses at both times and that's exactly the description they gave but what's ironic is that in both cases a laptop was like sort of the the a laptop was available to steal and they didn't steal it 
the, and in both cases, and, and the guy was given same cell, same kind of description. The first case, the guy actually took the laptop in the person's bag. It was a female student. And um, so he took the bag, and then after the laptop was found, but in different condition, kind of like beaten up. Oh, wow. Where and was it found? The campus security apparently found it somewhere on campus. Hmm. And they told the person who... who got it stolen was like oh this this just means that it was one of your friends playing a prank on you kind of thing and she was really upset but it that. was like beaten up the laptop like yeah 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 and like all this was, was it still working it was working but everything was wiped oh wow yeah yeah that sounds really fishy yeah and then um the same thing happened to this guy because they broke into his car his laptop was there to steal and he said they tampered with his laptop in, in what way? He said that, more or less, he, they, you can tell that they were, like, trying to open it, trying to use it, trying to figure it out, like, and it had a few, like, I don't know, knocks on it, I guess, which is exactly what this, the, the, the first person said with their case. But I think her own was a little bit more beat up. Oh. His own, he could just tell his computer was tampered with more than anything. Sounds like some kind of cyber spy i don't know what it is it's it's, it's, yeah. it's really weird and actually interestingly i guess this is a good time to sort of mention it but i'm trying to organize uh interview with the new soon-to-be guild president justin subaru wow. um so that's in the works we'll see if it happens maybe that'll be next week's show kind of thing mm -hmm. um with video and everything well i'm just seeing the time we now are running just about over 21 minutes I don't know if you want to talk about one more thing before we go or you want to call it a day. It, it's up to you. Um, mm, well, I think if we talk about anything else, we'll run way, yeah. way, way over time. <laughs> All right, let's just call it a time there. So, guys, if this, is, if you have listened to the entire, if you've reached this far in the podcast, I'd just like to say... Thank you very much <laughs> if you've reached this far. <laughs> big thanks, you know, because we didn't say much about the actual podcast itself. What is the format going to be? How you can, you know... But we just sort of had a little bit of a discussion, a little bit of a test for the first podcast. And a little bit of fun, too. Yeah, it was definitely fun, and I'm, I'm looking forward to doing this on a weekly basis and yeah sorry for not uploading content recently in terms of the youtube channel being a little busy but we're getting back to all of that now so yeah you could just subscribe to the youtube channel 868 media facebook or you can just go across to the website where all of the relevant social media platforms are linked that is jd lancer not like a car james d lancer at well, jamesdlancer.org, sorry. Don't even know my own website yet. <laughs> and it's not it's not Lancer like a car. It's L-A-N-S-E-R. I'm sure all of this will be linked somewhere in the podcast where you can just click it. So, but anyway, thanks a lot. We'll see you next week. Great talking to you. you. All right. Bye.